Let's get right into the key to developing resilience in basketball. It all starts with your mental pre-performance checklist and routine. Some people call it a pre-practice routine. Some people call it pre-game routine. Just look at it objectively speaking. It's your performance. And what you want to do before you even set one foot on the court is you want to prepare your mind and your body mentally. What's the first smallest action you can do? You can start imagining yourself being successful. How about this? Let me give you something. How about imagining shooting and missing a shot? But then imagining telling yourself a word I'm going to tell you coming up or a phrase I should say, next shot, best shot. And all of a sudden, you take that next shot and you make it. You can actually play that movie in your mind without even setting up one foot on the court. See, it's all about preparing yourself to get ready for high level production on the court. And it all to me starts with your mentality. I can do that without even going to the basketball court. Where's my mind to prepare my mind and body to get ready to play at a high level? Do I have a checklist, right? Do, is, are there certain key performance indicators I wanna make sure that are checked off that allow me to get relaxed and ready to play? What are they? For me, it was a couple of things. So I could be out of my head and on the court and looking to help my teammates get better, understand the coach's playbook for that particular game because scouting reports change my team. And then last, what happened last possession? See, when you're out of your head and you're on a court, you're present, and that's the key. It's all about your approach, and to me, it starts with your mental pre-performance, checklist, and routine. Now, let's talk about how to maintain eyes in the net when you're in a pressure situation. These are our pressure dribbles, so setting the body up, you're in a drop step stance. You keep your chin even with your inside shoulder. Parallel is the word I use, but keeping it very simple, keep it even. So Jake is on me applying a lot of pressure on my left upper shoulder, look at what I'm doing. So instead of focusing here or retreating, my eyes are still in the net. I'm looking at you at home, I still can do what? Go make a play. And I'm hiding the ball with my body. The ball is away. Jake can't steal that ball. Try to reach for it. There's no, it's, it makes no sense. He reaches this way, I have him move that way. He comes over here, I have him back up. So pressure release dribbles, Jake. All I want is two dribbles up, change it, chin parallel to the right shoulder, two dribbles back. Ready to go, pressure release, go. One, two, change it. One, two, now defense on, here you go, drive it. Look that way, good, there you go. Pressure, yep, exactly. See now look, if I keep going here, exactly, naturally. I don't care about the loose ball, but look, naturally. I showed here, he went behind his back. Cause he now has whole court vision, that's the whole key. So work on pressure release dribbles. Now, again, showing you skill wise. Chin even with your inside shoulder and pushing a target or your defender. Hide the ball, work on your hands. If you can't do this yet, no big deal. Work on it. Look how far away this ball is from my body. That's the whole key. Now I go left hand, same concept, last one. Right, this ball is way from me, it's away. Now look at what I have, opportunities, on all these concepts we're sharing, we're sharing with you, okay? Two must know footwork moves to box out your opponent every time. These are the two critical footwork moves you need to master to box out your opponent every single time when you're playing defense. And it's the pivots that I actually teach on offense. There's a front pivot and an inside pivot. If he is where he's at and he's looking at the basketball and I have a slight advantage, when I advance to his body, what you're gonna do, you're gonna go to your right. He's gonna go to his right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a front pivot. So when I advance, he goes to his right, I'm gonna front pivot into his body and get low to back, back him up. No body in position, stay where you are. When I advance, I'm taking my right foot and swinging it towards him to look to back him up because I have a slight advantage. Why? Because again, he now is reactionary. He saw me coming at him, he didn't move. Now when he moves, I have an opportunity to create an advantage. Now let's say he's proactive. You're cat quick. I don't have a chance to do that now. Go quick, go quick. See, I can't do that. I do that front pivot, he's gonna get that basketball. However, I can do what's called an inside pivot. Be cat quick, I can turn, look at that contact, right? And see, it all depends on the situation. That's why you wanna learn to master this stuff so you can do it with little thought and it becomes automatic. When you have an advantage, slow, go, bang, front, pivot. I don't have an advantage, he goes, I wanna go here, go, 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 bang, like this, stop, right? Now, I wanna get low, and I do what's called an inside pivot. Those are the two ways you wanna to learn to master your footwork when you box out, and all of a sudden now, you're tough to compete with any offensive player, and you keep them away from crashing the boards, where now you great advantages on defense.
Now, what do you look for when you have the basketball? I talked about the feet. Attack the feet. I'm looking at his eyes. Where is he at? Even feet, that's fine. I'm gonna go with what I call a cross step. I'm neutral, meaning I can have my right or left foot as my pivot foot. He's even, I'm a cross step that. He did it naturally, make your move, he drop stepped. That's gonna give me all I need to continue to go to the basket. Even if he takes it away, I think we just talked about working on spins a video or two ago, that's how that's gonna work right there. So a cross step, a cross step is slow, but it's powerful because it keeps your defender on your side. If a cross step doesn't work, I can go with a direct step. A direct step is a step with the foot and the hand. These are quicker, but they expose a lot more. So play defense like you know. They expose a lot more to where you gotta make moves. I'm a fan, again, of, I can show you direct steps, attacks, right? And I can show you a cross step attack. Cross step attack. Now, notice when I cross step where I put them. The cross step, there's something about it to be said that it's a long step and I engaged him and I placed him where I need. And the move to me that comes naturally is a drop step spin move. So I cross step it, set him up. He takes away that cross step. I can now direct step and catch you on that one. That is how you beat your defender. You got cross steps and direct step. Play this video back over and over and over. Look at my feet. Look at the things I talked about. And you'll learn how to compete at a high level with and without the basketball. Now I'm going to show you three drills to perform by yourself that are guaranteed to make you an elite passer. See, you must know how to pass the basketball after making a dribble move. You must know how to pass the ball after making a hard pound dribble. What it is to the mentality as a mental reminder, from the very last dribble you take, the hard pound, you want to pick it up and then get rid of it as soon as possible. You don't want to pick it up and study and survey the court, there may be a time for that. But you don't want to learn how to smash it, pick it up and pass it. Smash it, pick it up and pass it. Mental reminder, smash it, pick it up, pass it. Smash, pass, somebody's open. Whether it's a direct pass or a cross pass. One of the things you can learn to do is a simple dribble pickup. And I'm gonna start off with a easy hard pound dribble. Picking the basketball up, I'll do what I call a rhythm dribble. I'll dribble it three times and I'll pick the ball up. And the key to passing as well, you wanna pass the basketball from a lowered body, a lowered body, loaded leg position where you're strong physically. So three pound dribbles, I wanna pick it up. Change it. Notice I'm not swaying, moving, I'm staying still. One, two, three, pick up. One, two, three, pick up. Notice that I'm not coming up as well. I'm standing in a low stance. My legs are loaded. I drop my hips. I load my legs and my body now is still. Two dribbles. One, one, one. Two, two, one, one, one. Imagine you got game. You can handle the basketball a little bit. I'm doing a stationary, giving you some ideas now. Now I can use an in to out dribble over the top, in out, right below my knee, in out. Come on, learn how to pick the ball up. Now I can go also with between the legs, pickups. Behind the back, pickups. Then I can get on the move with that. The same thing I did stationary, I wanna now do what I call doing it dynamic. Now I'm on the move where I'm using the wall. I'm going directly to the wall as if I'm facing the basket. I wanna work on those same dribble moves and pass the ball ahead of me, right? Using my dominant hand and non-dominant hand. I wanna see if you can figure it out and then make a comment in the comment section to see if you know I'm right hand or left handed, right? Very simple, loaded legs, speed dribble, pick it up, get rid of it. Pass the ball, right hand. Same concept, loaded legs, speed dribble, pick it up, right? I only want one dribble, right? I wanna get used to getting rid of the basketball. Now let's talk about changing speeds, changing directions. Throwing the ball ahead. Firing that basketball at that universal release. Getting that ball to my teammate. All direct passes, right? All direct passes. Now, making a double move. Pass it come back now I want to talk about my teammates to the side of me making a dribble move to the basket coming to a stop 
and pass the ball out, right? Whether it's a direct pass or it's a cross pass. Right, make a move, coming to it, pass. Coming to it, make a move, pass. You got game, work on stuff like that. It's not showing out. Pass. Right, I'm passing that ball hard, as you see. Last drill setting, I have two basketballs. I'm only gonna dribble one, but I wanna give you a short, quick understanding as to why I wanna hold one, because I wanna get used to having my offhand or the non-dribbling the non hand always up and active, acting as a shield to protect me from a reaching defender. And it also helps me create extra space and separation from my defender. So I'm gonna hold one ball while making a dribble move with the other. Then I'm gonna pass the ball, right? The ball might go out of the picture now, now we're not using the wall. Because now what I'm doing is I'm actually using what I call a game-based application. So first you want to do it stationary, right? Stay still, learn how to get the feel for it, dribble pickups. Then I did it dynamic on the move where now I'm using the wall, taking a basket away, not focusing on finishing or shooting. Okay, working on the techniques of uh, direct pass, cross passes. Now I challenge myself to focus and concentrate by holding a ball. I'm dribbling one, I'm going to pass one doesn't matter which one I pass, then I'm going to scoring solutions, whether I'm attacking a basket for a layup finish around the rim or I'm shooting a jumper, I'm going at it, right? I'm gonna do it three times, here I go. So ball may go out of the scene, it's okay, but I wanna show you how to get this done. So walking through, I'm attacking the basket, right? I got one up, I can direct pass it, I can cross pass it, whichever one I keep, I'm then going to create a dribble drive solution while I'm attacking the basket for, again, a layup finish or a jumper. Coming into it, cross pass, attack the basket, lay the ball up. You may have basketballs flying all over the gym, but it's okay because you're working on your game. Ball starts in my left hand. I want to attack, change directions, pass it, lift up and shoot it. So again, working on my game. The balls are flying. And that's typically what it's gonna look like, but you know you got the ball going a direct path, but that ball's going where you need to go. Right, having some fun with it now. So you see I'm changing the basketball, keeping the ball up, direct pass left, step back shot, going to hold. And there you have it. Three drills you can work on to excel at to become an elite level passer. To a stationary first, work on pickups. Dribble it, pick it up to learn how to get rid of it quick. Then get in motion on it with a dribble. Learn to stop, pass it direct, pass across your body, right? Take the basket away. Then do it game-based application. Go to a game spot, make a pass, go shoot a game shot. Let me show you how your friend Bobo will help you finish strong. Before I can introduce you to Bobo, we must first find our feet. When you shoot layups, whether you're shooting a layup or you also shoot what we call a floater, a push floater. A layup is a point blank shot right at the rim. A floater is not like nearby the rim, eight feet kind of in, right? A runner is like a two hand running jump shot to kind of give you ideas. But either you're shooting a one foot finish or a two foot finish. A one foot finish is a speed finish. That's a finish that you actually do when you're like on a fast break or you do a backdoor cut and there's no help. You need to get to the basket as soon as possible. A two foot finish is more power. You need to finish in traffic. Somebody's catching up. For me, the two foot finish also helps you understand how to finish strong because if you anticipate contact, guess what? The jump stop will help you gain back your balance control to shoot the ball higher off the what? The backboard. And the backboard offers so many different entry points, you do what? You end up finishing at a high percentage. Showing you on the ground, here's Bobo. When the defender's body's on you, you want your ball out and away from you. Body on, B-O, ball out, B-O. Body on, defender, ball out. So when you're going to go finish, the defender's coming from my left side. Let's say I'm going with that one foot finish. I'm strong enough, I feel I'm strong enough, I can beat him to the spot. Body on, ball is out and away from my body. I can do that overhand, I can do that underhand, I can do that with a wide hand. Those are three hand accountabilities I can do. A wide hand layup, you're like what is that? That's a wide hand layup, and a wide hand layup also is like a reverse layup. Nothing more than an extended long layup that I would do in front of me. My hands are in front of me stretched, it's just wide out. Even when I dribble the basketball, Defender's body on me, ball is out and away from me. I can control my defender. Look how far that ball is away from me. Right, that's how you start gaining trust. So now imagine me going to go finish that, the same concept. 
Again, imagine that defender being on me on my left hip and shoulder. Defender's body on me, ball out and away from me. So the concept with my back behind you is defender, my body, ball. To keep it short to a verbal cue, defender, body, ball. Defender, body, ball. That's how you want to play. Body on, ball out. Body on, ball out. Body on, ball out. Out in the way. Two foot finish. Body on, ball out. I can shoot it higher. Instead of shooting two free throws, I want to shoot one because I got an and one opportunity. That's simple. Body on, ball out. Ball out in the way. Two foot. Body on, ball out. One foot. That's your friend Bobo. Body on, ball out. Keep it that simple. Let's keep the momentum going with that bonus I mentioned earlier. We've covered a lot in this video, and I really want to make sure I'm helping you out. So I'd like to offer you a guide that covers all the muscle and basketball principles and in what switch to apply them. This is a powerful guide of best practice tips and skills empowering you to take charge of your game. Just click the link in the description below. You can download the guide I put together as my gift to you. Enjoy it and keep attacking.